wellness. And this is a video I decided to do for one of my clients while I was on vacation and I wanted her to practice some things at home. Um, she's taking care of her low back. Um, I don't want to give away too much information, but if you find yourself in that same situation, your low back is tweaky and it bothers you sometimes making some movements and exercise difficult, this may be um, something that you would want to try. This is just a warm-up. It's some breathing exercises and some basic warm-ups that you would do before a pre-Pilates or before a um, gentle Pilates session. Um, and this is just what I wanted for her to do so that she would stay moving while I was away and wasn't able to work with her. So I hope you like it. Um, even if you are someone who is completely healthy and works out all the time, it's still a great um, routine to do even if, you know, if you're on a day where maybe you are feeling you want to do something just a little bit more gentle or you're taking care of yourself for whatever reason or you're someone who's just gotten over being ill or sick or just had a baby, it's a really great little pre-Pilates routine that you might want to try. Okay, it involves some breathing, so we're gonna go ahead and lay down. So this is what you would do. You would lay yourself down. Hopefully I fit in the shot. <laughs> All right, and you just let yourself settle. We're gonna start with belly breathing. So you could have your hands on your belly if you want to, or you can bring your arms by your side. And all you're gonna do is let yourself settle. So you wiggle your pelvis around so it feels neutral. It's not tilted front, back, sideways, whatever. It's comfortable. Your feet are comfortable. You're letting your shoulder blades be comfortable. Your shoulders fall open your, and your shoulders and collarbones open towards the ceiling. And you wiggle your head around too. The back of the head touches the mat, but there is some space underneath your neck. So basically you're staring at the ceiling or you can close your eyes if you want to. So when we breathe, we want to inhale and our belly will expand. You could have your hands on your belly if you want to. And when you exhale, your breath moves in. Your navel pulls into your spine and your breath moves. So when you inhale, your belly expands. That's where the breath is moving to. When you exhale, the breath moves up into your lungs and the navel pulls away from the spine. So it's inhale, the belly expands, breath moves down. Exhale, your breath moves up, navel pulls into spine, breath moves up into the lungs. So we just move that all around. And that's how we would breathe when we're practicing yoga or in our day-to-day -day life. That's how we wanna breathe. When we're driving our car, when we're at work, when we're in bed, uh, when we're cooking dinner, when we're talking to somebody, we want our breath to move. A lot of us don't do that. A lot of us only breathe in our chest, but that's what we wanna do. Now, because a lot of us just breathe in our chest, we don't get full exhaled out a lot of the time. So what we wanna do is, breathing number two is S breathing. It seems weird. If you're not used to it or you're not used to me or any of my classes, it might be something that just seems completely odd to you. <laughs> but it's a great way to get all the carbon, it's a full exhale, it's a great way to get all that carbon dioxide out of the body that might be trapped in there. Or again, if we, if we just tend to breathe up here, it's a great way to get things going. What we wanna do is make sure that we're not, um, just doing them as fast as we possibly can. So if we're doing this while we're watching TV, we don't want to feel like we're just hyperventilating or just breathing them over and over and over and over, but not doing it mindfully. Even with these, if you do five of them mindfully, that is better than nothing. So what you do is you literally, it's called S breathing. You make the S sound. So it's an inhale through the nose. And when you exhale, it's a And you make that exhale, exhale like I just did as long as possible. You take your time. You don't rush it. You don't force it. You don't want to feel like you're like, you know, just let it come out, but make noise through the mouth. And the reason we do it that way, a lot of people get embarrassed. And they don't want to make that sound is it will keep you in the moment and it will keep you breathing that way properly. The minute you stop making the S sound or you start forcing it or your brain clicks into other things, you're not really doing it. You're not really mindful. Okay. So again, We'll do a few of them. We'll do five rounds together, and then you can, you can decide if you want to do more or not, okay? So let's take an inhale through the nose, and exhale. Again, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, 
Exhale. One more. Okay, that got you completely breathing and it gets all those exhales out. The inhales you don't need to worry about because if you need to breathe, that inhale is gonna happen regardless. But our exhales, not so much a lot of the times. Okay, the next one is our Pilates breathing. So we've done our belly breathing, we did our S breathing. You can put your rib cage, your hands on your rib cage if you want to. So Pilates breathing, you pull your powerhouse in, navel comes into the spine, we're keeping our pelvis nice and neutral, but we're keeping that belly pulled in. So no more of the rising and falling in that belly breathing, okay? So hands are gonna go to the rib cage. Inhale, we wanna expand, so feel the rib cage expand as you inhale. And when you exhale, you'll feel your rib cage draw closer together. It's a really small movement. It's not super big, but it's inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. So hopefully you can see that my belly as I breathe isn't rising or falling. Hopefully you can see that. But the ribcage is expanding and contracting. We want the powerhouse pulled in when we do Pilates because we do want our lower back protected at all times. Okay, so that's our Pilates breathing. And we would do five to 10 of those. Okay, so from here, we're gonna do our um, sort of our elevator doors, finding our spine sandwich, okay? So even though we're lying down, if I say lifting up, we're not actually lifting anything off the mat, okay? <laughs> when I say lift up, you're literally trying to, as though you were seated, you're gonna pull your pelvic floor, so you can see, Pull your pelvic floor up towards the top of your body, okay? So your arms can be by your side. I probably will move my hand out of the way so that you'll be able to see. We'll figure out where that, that angle is. But the first thing we wanna do is that powerhouse is pulled in and you're also creating, we call the spine sandwich. Your back is pulling in also, so you kind of get this like a cylinder kind of squeezing together here, okay? Like an accordion, all right? So you haven't just pulled your belly in and then tilted your pelvis so that your low back presses into the mat. You wanna feel that your spine is moving in towards your center also, okay? So spine sandwich. The same thing happens on your sides, each side of your waistline. You wanna feel like they are getting closer together also. So kind of like a cylinder, okay, up and down everything pulls in and lengthens, okay? So think of putting on your Spanx or a girdle, or if you're a man, a weight belt, whatever it is, that kind of long, everything just got tiny, okay? So that's all beautiful. Then we're gonna breathe, but we also have to work the pelvic floor. So there's no big movement here, it's very internal, so you can't watch. Um, and as you're attempting to do this, it may feel weird, or you might not sure if you're getting it. Just try to stick with it and, and hopefully it will click, okay? But you're thinking about an elevator. So you pulled everything in, everything is nice and tight, and then you think about the different floors in, a, in an elevator. So the pelvis doesn't move, but you're thinking about your pubic bone, okay, the very base of your pelvis. And when you inhale, we're gonna lift the pubic bone, the pelvic floor up, try to bring it towards your navel. Okay, nothing is working, you're not tilting or anything, but you're trying to pull, think internally, pull that pelvic floor to your navel, that's floor one. Then we bring it to the second floor past your navel. Then you're trying to bring it up towards the rib cage. It doesn't literally go there, but we wanna feel like we're trying to pull it. There's a pause. And then we exhale, we go back to floor two above the navel and the first floor below the navel and then we release it. Okay, so again, we're gonna pull it in. We go to below the navel, above the navel, a little higher, towards the rib cage, hold. And exhale, we release a little bit towards the navel, below the navel, all the way down. There's a little release there. So the belly kind of gets let go for a second there. We find it all again, find that spine sandwich. We're gonna lift up towards the, the below the navel, Go on past the navel and then up towards the rib cage. Pause and hold and release towards the navel, below the navel, 
and release. We'll do one more. So we're going to lift up towards just below the navel, past the navel, towards the rib cage, hold, and release to the navel, below the navel, and release. So hopefully that made sense. If it didn't, just continue to work on it and post any questions below. <laughs> Maybe I can do a, a video sitting up so you can see that a little bit better. All right, so arms by our sides, pelvic tilt. So for pelvic tilts, we want our feet to be pretty stable and they're gonna stay where they are. The knees face the ceiling. We don't wanna use our feet for pelvic tilt. So a lot of times when I teach a Pilates class, I'm just gonna move my arms out of the way so you can see, but normally your arms would be by your side. But what I see is people really rocking and rolling and getting that pelvis to move and there's a lot of movement here. That's not what we wanna do. We don't want our glutes and hamstrings involved in squeezing things for us and we don't wanna push our feet into the floor to get that to happen. So it's much more subtle. Okay, so I'll get my arms out of the way. So we're going to rock the pelvis. It's just curling the pelvis towards you. Your low back presses in the mat. Your belly is scooped out. Then you roll the hips away and your belly's going to slightly arch off the mat. Maybe you can get fingers underneath there. Maybe you can't. Maybe there's a little daylight or something. Okay, so then we just rock and roll. So it's very subtle. We're not using our legs. There shouldn't be anything going on there. There's a little bit of movement, but not that much. If you were watching me, you might not notice that movement. It's very subtle. Okay, that's really learning how to use that powerhouse and keeping everything scooped out. And it should be subtle enough if you're taking care of your low back that you can get some movement going on, but not to the point where you're hurting yourself. And then release. Good, so we're gonna add to that. So for pelvic lifts, I'll put my arms by, our, by my side, you're gonna curl that pelvis just like you did. So it's a little bit more of a movement and then you're gonna peel your back off the mat into a bridge. Now keep in mind, when we come to bridge, our knees try to pop open, we're gonna hug those towards each other. We're gonna keep our hip flexor open so you can even put your hands here if you want to, if you're feeling stable, so that you don't have that hip crease. You see that crease that happens right there? You drop and then your bottom almost touches the ground but there's space below your low back. We don't want that. We want to keep it up and we want to lower everything down one vertebra at a time. Is our booty, does it stick out a little further than our lumbar spine? Yes, it does. So we're going to try and keep this open and we try to lower down without letting that collapse so that we get each vertebra at a time through that spine, that middle back, that lower back, and then finally our bottom touches down. We get a nice cat, um, quad stretch through here. We let our pelvis go. We release. We immediately curl and we peel, lifting up hold, think a nice high bottom and scooped ab as opposed to your alternative which is a saggy bottom and a poochy ab, we don't want that. Hug those legs towards each other, they don't have to touch and make sure the hip flexor stays nice and open here and we melt it down. So we're work working on that upper back and the middle back. Maybe we're getting into that lumbar, the pelvis stays tilted and gently it comes down and then it releases. Let's do that again, we lift it up. I'm going to put my hands where they're supposed to be but again you can keep your hands here if it reminds you to keep your hip flexor open. And we lower down one vertebra at a time. Again, if you're taking care of your back and this is bothering you, if it's just a little bit too much, that, that curl of the pelvis gets to any of those discs and you just don't feel comfortable, do the best that you can, but take these slow and make sure you're breathing, that should help. But when we're dealing with our low back, if it hurts or you can't breathe, that's always a sign to stop. So please, please listen to your body. Now a little sensation like muscular sensation or that feeling of like, oh, I'm working something or maybe I needed that is a good sign. Okay, so we'll stop right there. So we kind of worked the center, okay, and we, we got things moving, which is good. Now we're going to focus on pelvic stability. We're going to work the upper body and the lower body. Very small movements, very subtle. So arms by our sides. We're going to turn our palms to face each other. We send our arms up. The torso cannot move at all. The pelvis doesn't move. Nothing moves. Turn your palms to face the floor. Bring them down and let them hover over the, the floor, the mat, and reach your fingertips to the wall in front of you so that your shoulders pull away from your ears. Palms face each other. We come up. Palms face away. We lower down and we hover. Palms face each other. We come up and hold. Palms face away. We come down and hover. Palms face each other, we come up. Palms face down, we hover. It's a really small movement. You're not getting like this big arm exercise or anything, but it's great for learning pelvic stability. 
You're not rocking and rolling the pelvis. The feet aren't going anywhere. The legs aren't moving or 